everyone. Welcome to the Grace and Truth broadcast. I'm Dwayne Sheriff, and I'm sharing on the subject of identity, our new identity in Christ. And specifically, again, Identity Theft is the book that we're teaching out of that the Lord put on my heart years ago. And I really believe that this is a necessity and that people are struggling because they don't know who they are in Christ. They don't know where they came from. They don't know where they're going, and they don't know how to get there from here. <laughs> that, was the, that was the song and, and sign of the 60s is, who am I? Who am I? Today, people ask the question, how do you identify? And man, it is sad what Satan has done and the depth that he has taken an identity crisis. I thought I had an identity crisis coming up as a kid, and I certainly did, and I've shared some of that. But our young people are facing an identity crisis today, and you talk about the devil coming to steal, kill, and destroy. He is attacking their identity at such a basic level, and the whole purpose is to destroy their purpose, to mess up the course of their life and to keep them from fulfilling not only their purpose, but their divine design. God created us, and He created us a certain way that matches our purpose. You have a divine design, brothers and sisters, created by God that matches your purpose so you can fulfill your purpose in, in God. So we're just looking at these different identities. I, in the last episode, shared how you have a, a short-term identity that you were born into. You didn't ask to be born into the family you were born into and the character traits that genetically you inherited, uh, but that's your short-term Your short term identity is your, is your immediate family. Then there's the family of man, that we all came out of a long-term identity, and we have to understand this in order to experience our new identity, our eternal identity, and our long-term identity was in Adam. We all came out of the family of man. You've got your immediate family and an identity that you were born into. Then you have the family of man that we're either in Adam, the family of man, or now we have faith in God and we're in Christ, the family of God. You're either in the Adam's family or you're in the family of God. Anybody remember the Adams family? They were weirdos, and they thought everybody else was a weirdo. <laughs> That's man without God. Man in Adam thinks he's normal, and the Christians are abnormal. Man in Adam, the Adams family, thinks that they are the ones that are wise and that are beautiful and that are normal, when in fact... They're the abnormal ones. When I was in Adam, I was less than all God created me to be. Sin had blitzed and blighted God's image in my life. Sin steals, kills, and destroys. Sin drags you away from God. And, and, and God didn't plan or will for any of us to live in sin. None of us are at home in sin. That's why he sent Jesus and that now we can have a long-term identity in Christ, a new identity in Christ. So let's look at some of these things because again, you're in the family of God now, not the Adams family, and you need renewed. You got into the Adams family by first birth. You get out of the Adams family by second birth, by new birth. You got into Adam and sin through birth. You were born into it. And once you see how you get into sin, now you know how to get out. You have to be born out. You have to be born again. And that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. You know, if you think it's your personal sins that make you a sinner, then you'll think it's your personal holiness that makes you righteous. If you think it's your sins that made you a sinner and separated from God, then you'll think it's your holiness that reconciles you back to God. 
But if you see one man, Adam, a master copy, and we were all on the inside of Adam, and when he sinned, we sinned, then you see, hey, you were born into sin through Adam. Now you can see how to get out of sin. You got to get born out. You got to get born again in the second man, the last Adam, Jesus Christ, the new birth. All right, let's start with the new creation here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. These were the first passages that God gave me after my open vision of the cross and my new identification in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we'll start in verse 13. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. Or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. That I, I need a sound mind, not for my sake, but for your sake, to communicate the gospel, to communicate the new creation, our new identity. Verse 14 says, For the love of Christ compels us, King James Bible says constrains us, because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. That is profound. That is powerful. That's what I saw in the open vision of the cross that I had. I didn't see that I was dying on the cross. No, I saw I died in Christ, that I was crucified to the world, Galatians 6.14 says, and the world was crucified to me through that vision. And that's what the scriptures teach in Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Boy, that, that used to be so confusing, Galatians 2.20 there, that I'm crucified with Christ, I died. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But now Christ liveth in me. When, when you get born again, the old man is put to death by the power of the cross and by your faith in the cross. And now, and now you're a new man when you get born again, united to the very spirit of Christ, one spirit with the Lord. 1 Corinthians 6, 17 says, so, so now you're a new creation, he goes on to say. Let's back up here again at verse 14 and look at it. He says, for the love of Christ compels or constrains us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. Jesus died for all. He died for us all. And God put to death in Jesus your old nature, your old man in Adam. That's what died. That's what was crucified. That's what I saw in my open vision of the cross. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. He's simply saying, if, if, if Jesus put to death my old man in Adam, and he did, and now I'm a new man united to Christ, I don't need to live for my old man. I don't need to live after my old man, after my flesh, or for myself, independent of God. I need to be living now for and from, from this new condition in God. Man, I love verse 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. That right there is profound. And brothers and sisters, it is the key to a victorious life. It's the key to destroying all this division that Satan so skillfully uses against even the body of Christ. We have all these divisions among us because we insist on knowing ourselves after the flesh, after race versus after the new creation and grace. And yet you can talk to people I guarantee you, you can go up to person after person, even Christian after so-called Christian, and ask them who they are, and they will identify with their flesh, that they know themselves only after the flesh. And after the flesh, Romans chapter 7, verse 18 says, there's no good thing. Paul says, there's no good thing in me. That is to say, my flesh. 
Boy, he had to say it that way because there is a good thing in you. If you're born again, Christ is in you, the hope of glory. But he's not in your flesh. He's in your spirit. He's united to your spirit. You're born again spirit and this flesh is just a temple. It's a temporary house, a temporary dwelling place for your spirit until the return of the Lord, the appearing of his kingdom uh, and, and the resurrection now of these, of these bodies. And so the bottom line is most people know themselves after race and not after grace. And they glory in their race. They glory in their flesh. They glory in their strength. They glory in their intelligence, which is a part of their flesh. They glory in their carnal, unrenewed minds that Romans chapter 8, verse 7 says is an enmity. It's an enemy of God. It's not subject to God, neither indeed can be. But most people walk after their flesh. They live after their flesh. They identify after their flesh. Again, there's no good thing in my flesh. My, my, my grandmother on my dad's side was full-blooded Indian. We don't even know what kind of Indian. It doesn't matter uh, because of the new creation. But after the flesh, one generation back is, is Indian on my dad's side. And again, she didn't register uh, because of the stigma back then uh, within the culture, and so we don't really know. But on my, my mother's side, my grandmother was, was French. Uh, and so basically, I'm French Indian, and, and it doesn't mean a thing. God doesn't see me after the flesh. There's no advantage after my flesh. None of us are any good after our flesh. None of us are strong after the flesh. Our strength is in the Lord and in the power of His might. And yet most people know themselves after the flesh. And so Paul here says that we are to know no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we Him no more. Know we Him no more what? After the flesh. None of us knew Jesus after the flesh. None of you watching know Jesus after the flesh. But chances are most of you watching know Jesus. You've met Jesus. You, you've given your heart to Jesus and you know him. That's part of your covenant with God. Hebrews chapter 8 and Hebrews chapter 10. The terms of the new covenant is We'll not have to teach everyone his neighbor to know the Lord for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. All shall know me, shall have a relationship with me, shall have a personal revelation of knowing me. And, and, and now, how do we know him? We know him in two ways, brothers and sisters, you know Jesus. If you know Jesus today, you know him after the spirit, revelation, and you know him after the word of God. He's revealed in scripture by the Holy Spirit. And so what Paul is saying is we don't need to know ourselves any longer after the flesh. There's no good thing in your flesh. This flesh isn't better than that flesh. And some of you think you are good flesh, that you're USDA flesh and you are no good after the flesh. None of us are any good after the flesh. Our flesh is a reflection of the old man in Adam. It's the leftover of that old creation. That's why we have the promise of a new body, a resurrected body, an immortal body. And on and on I could, I could, I could go. And so God says, do not know yourself any longer or each other after the flesh. Man, our world is so flesh dominated, five physical senses dominated, what they see dominated. People, the first thing they recognize is flesh in each other, the color of skin, gender, on and on I could go with all the death permeating the culture because of the flesh and knowing people after the flesh. If you're a Christian, you're not supposed to know yourself any longer after the flesh or each other after the flesh. Well, how are we supposed to know one another then? 
How did I come to know myself after the, the born again experience, after the Spirit and after the Word? See, you have to renew your mind to the new creation now. Let's read it real quick and then, you know, I'll, I'll go back again. Look at verse 17. Therefore, because you're to know no man after the flesh, and, and now the love of Christ is constraining us, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to Himself through Jesus Christ and has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. You are a new creation if you're no longer in Adam but in Christ. How do I get in Christ? You get born again. You, you, you were born in the flesh into Adam and now you're born into Christ by the Spirit. And you're a brand new creation, a new person inside, brothers and sisters. And you have to be renewed to that. You have to see yourself after that. You know, if you want to see your flesh, you, you look into a mirror. And I've, I've never seen my face. I've seen the reflection of my face, but I've never seen my face. But if I look in a mirror, I can get an idea of certain features or character traits of my, of my face. If I want to know what my outer man looks like, I look in a mirror. If I want to know what my soul looks like, then I meditate, I reflect on, on the philosophies I've gained over the years or the, or the teachings or instructions that I've received. And, and I can take an inventory of my soul by my emotions, my five physical senses, and my reasoning or ability to, to process. And so I've got a soul that I can evaluate, uh, but who I am in Christ and who you are in Christ is your spirit. It's your spirit man that's born again. That's the part of you that got born again. And the only way you can see that part or feel that part is by the Holy Spirit and the Scriptures. This is how you discover the new you. This is how you discover who you are now in Christ is by taking the Word of God, which is a mirror of the spirit world. See, you can't see the spirit world, but the spirit world is real even though you can't see it. Right now, I don't see angels. I can't see angels, but the angels are real and they're here. They're in the spirit world. It's right here. It's not a billion years away. It's right here. Heaven is right here. One of the things I discovered when I, when I died in January of 2020 was that heaven is right here. I didn't, I didn't step out of my body and travel for billions of years. No, heaven is just right here. Jesus is right here. The angels are right here. They've been assigned. You had an, an, you had an angel assigned to you at birth by Jesus. And there are angels that God has given charge over us. They uphold us. They keep us in all of our ways lest we dash our foot against a stone, but I can't see them with these eyes. I don't feel them through my senses. But how do I know that I know that I know they're here? It's by the mirror of the, of the Word of God. When I, when I take the Word of God, it says God has given angels charge over me. It says I have entertained, you have entertained. In the book of Hebrews, angels unawares. That is so powerful. Well, how do I know what I look like in my spirit, in my born-again part of my heart? I only know it by the Word of God and by revelation of the Spirit of God. This is how you discover who you are. This is why the Scriptures are so important. It's why searching the Scriptures are so important. You will never discover your new identity outside of the Scriptures. 
You'll never, you'll never know who you really are looking in a mirror. You'll only know who you really are looking in the mirror of God's Word. And whatever God's Word says you are, you really are in your spirit. You may not see it and feel it in your flesh. You might not even be able to humanly reason, reason it out yet. But when the Word of God says, this is who you are, are, then you have to understand that's who you are in your spirit, man. Boy, when I had that revelation of the cross, one of the first things God showed me out of, out of 2 Corinthians here, verse, verse 17, look at it again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, take a long, long, hard look at all things have become new. You'll never understand that till you understand spirit, soul, and body. You have to see that God is a triune God. Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God, three distinct separate manifestations of the one and true living God. And we're created in His image and in His likeness. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28, that God said, let us, let us, not let me, let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, let us, if you will, create man. Let us create man in our own image and in our, our likeness. Let us create them male and female and let us give them now dominion throughout the works and handiwork of God throughout this earth. And so man was created in the image and in the likeness of God and we too are a three-part being. Three-part being. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I believe it's verse 23, uh, talks about how that we are sanctified and how that, that God is working on us, spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. I pray your whole spirit, your whole soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That God wants to sanctify us wholly, not H-O-L-Y, but W-H-O-L-L-Y, wholly or completely. I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are a spirit being. You have a soul, mind, will, emotions, intellect, and you live in your body. And you'll never understand 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that you are a new creation, that old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When I got born again, old things didn't pass away in my body or my soul, and all things become new. But in my spirit, man, old things passed away. That old condition in Adam, that sinful nature in Adam, that man that was under judgment and condemnation, guilt and shame passed away. And now all things, all things where all things in my spirit have become new. Man, that is powerful. And I'm running out of time again, and I'm going to have to pick this up with spirit, soul, and body and again, you are a new creation in your spirit man, in the part of you that's born again. Well, I explain these things in detail in my book called Identity Theft. Identity Theft. And in this book, I, I talk about spirit, soul, and body. I talk about your heart. I talk about the tabernacle and how it was three parts and how God dwelt in a tent in the Holy of Holies, and God dwells in you. You're God's tent now, and He dwells in your Holy of Holies, your spirit man. I document all of that, help you understand it. We're offering the first two chapters of this book absolutely free if you'll contact me at pastordwayne.com, pastordwayne.com, or you can call us at area code 580-4040-376. Area code 580 580- 4040 DSM or 376 and we'll get you your free copy of the first two chapters 
of identity theft as quick as possible. And man, we can speed that up, especially if you call. Area code 580-4040-376. There's prayer partners available to pray for you and to help you get the first two chapters free. In the first two chapters, I share my, my experience in failing and falling and then the vision, the open vision of the cross. I've already shared that on these broadcasts, but you can get your free copy just by getting a hold of us. Identity theft, it's also available in our bookstore and wherever books are sold. But we'd love to get that free, that free copy of the first two chapters. Well, I want to thank our financial partners for being a part of the ministry. You can also get free messages, absolutely free, on CDs. We'll mail those to you. You can order at the website, or you can download videos, our podcast, all these things absolutely, absolutely free. And our financial partners make that possible. So thanks for praying about being a financial partner. We're expanding our television ministry. In some markets, we may be coming off if we haven't had any response, which that's okay because there's other markets where we're getting response and we just want to bless you. We want to help you. If you can become a financial partner, that would be greatly appreciated, but we'd love to hear from you no matter what. Thanks so much for being a part of the broadcast. God bless you. Hey, we want to take a moment to say thank you to our impact partners for your generosity. It's because of your partnership that we're able to continue to give away Dwayne's teachings completely free. To become a partner, you can visit our website or call the number on the screen. Thanks so much for your generosity and for taking part in our mission to help people grow in Christ. Thanks so much for watching. All of our content is available for free because of the generous donations from partners of Dwayne Sheriff Ministries. Visit our website, pastordwayne.com, to find the full message series and to learn how you can help partner with us. We hope you enjoyed this message.